Right, so the episode opens at the twins, yeah? Walder Frey's being uncharacteristically nice and gathering his whole family in one place, giving them expensive wine and saying nice things, which really should have tipped them off, if you ask me. So they start choking and he rips his face off to reveal Arya Stark, who can apparently do a really good David Bradley impression. Da 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 So then the smoke monster from Lost turns up and AH ZOMBIES! Bran comes down from a meth trip just as the watch opens the doors to them. They tell the watch who they are and what they've seen and they let them in. Over to Winterfell and King John John wants to mine for Dragonglass and train all the people, regardless of gender. Lyanna Mormont puts an old man in his place like a boss, while Sansa argues with John over letting some other northern families keep their castles. Sansa wants to punish the families of the people who betrayed them, but John's content to let bygones be bygones since the actual traitors are dead. He gets two kids to awkwardly swear loyalty to him and chews out Sansa for undermining him. They get a raven from Cersei, basically saying surrender or die. John isn't concerned as he's got bigger things to worry about. Sansa reminds him, Cersei's a stone-cold bitch who eventually found a way to murder everyone who crossed her. Speaking of, cut to King's Landing, where Cersei has commissioned a giant map painting of Westeros because apparently actual maps are for poor people. She reveals her new lore that her subjects must never allow her to be more than ten feet from wine at any given time. Then Jaime tells her everything's basically awful and the phrase are gone now so they're gonna need a new squad to get through it. Enter the Greyjoys. Euron rocks up, makes fun of Jaime's lost hand and proposes to Cersei, who basically tells him to jog on. Cut to the city where Sam Tarly has the grossest monotony montage ever shown on TV. He's not learning how to beat the White Walkers, so he goes to see Jim Broadbent and asks him for the key to the restricted section of the library and also for the memory that will help him defeat his nemesis. Oh, it's sorry, that's something else. Jim Broadbent believes in Sam about the White Walkers, but he says, don't worry, mate, this always passes. Sam's not satisfied with that answer, so he steals the key while he's asleep, which had apparently not occurred to him before. Cut to Winterfell and Brienne owns Pod's ass, which catches Tormund's attention. Little Littlefinger tries his usual shtick on Sansa, but she's in no mood, so he buggers off before she releases the Phoenix Force. Wait, sorry, that's something else. Her and Brienne slag him off behind his back, and we cut back to Arya on the way to King's Landing. But there, is that Ed Sheeran? So she sits down to have a chat, they give her some wine, and she tells him she's gonna kill the Queen. Bants! Meanwhile, in vague snowy place, the Hound is being the Hound with the Brotherhood. They gate crash a random house, and the Hound is like, so what makes you so special? And Beric's like, dunno, mate. Thoros wants him to look at the fire. He says no, but Thoros is insistent, so he sees the wall and a mountain and AH ZOMBIES! Later they bury the dead. Cut to Sam, who has left his Dragonglass essay until the night before it's due. Fortunately, he finds a kick-ass source to reference about Dragonstone and gets it in on time. So he's collecting plates from quarantine and AH ZOMBIE! Oh wait, that's Jorah Mormont voice and... Oh, he looks a bit peaky. So cut to Daenerys on a boat and cue the longest uninterrupted on-screen silence from Peter Dinklage ever shown on TV as she finally sets foot on Westerosi soil. It only took her six seasons. They then take a silent tour of the massive castle until they come to the war room. Shall we begin? Oh my god, this one took a while to cut down. Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage. Right, so we open where we last left off. In Dragonstone, and there's a bit of a drizzle. Daenerys is taking stock of her situation. She mentions that she could easily conquer Westeros with her dragons, and Tyrion's like, yeah, if you don't mind there not being much left. Pointing out that they could win with much less bloodshed with the support of the other nobles, which isn't unlikely as Cersei ain't exactly popular since the whole blowing everyone up thing left the people a tad chagrined. And she's like, fair? Varys says some words, but Danny's wise to him. She grills him about all the decisions he's made in the past and why. She makes it clear she doesn't trust him, and she's like, Don't betray me or I'll burn you. And he's like, Don't fuck up and I won't have to. And she's like, Fair. Then she gets a visit from the Red Woman, who tells her about Jon Snow and how much of a legit baller he is. Tyrion vouches for him, saying he's basically a stand-up guy and that he's an excellent judge of character. So she agrees to invite him to Dragonstone, sort of. Cut to Winterfell, and archery practice is happening. Jon shows Sansa the message from Tyrion, and asks what she makes of it. She makes out Tyrion's basically legit as far as she ever saw, but then she still thinks it's too big a risk. Davos points out that there might not be a choice in the matter, and that dragons would be a good thing to have on their side. Over to King's Landing, and Cersei is putting the old PR spin on things, painting Daenerys as a bloodthirsty psychopath. After blowing up most of the Court of King's Landing. She tries to tell them that if they work together, they can win. This prompts a question from Randall Tarly, the personification of that feeling you get when you remember we all have to die one day. The question being how she intends to take out three dragons. Cersei looks to Kyburn, who gives an empty response. Jamie goes off to talk to Tarly and basically tries to recruit him by talking smack about his last boss, Elena Tyrell. Cut to his kid Sam in the Citadel and Jim Broadbent examining Jorah. Oh god, he does look a bit off, doesn't he? There's a bit of back and forth, but the gist 
gist of it is they can't help him. Sam learns his name's Mormont before Jim Broadbent calls him away. Back to King's Landing, and Cersei is looking at the dragon skulls with Kyburn, and he unveils some artillery, a crossbow on steroids. Apparently Kyburn has seen the Hobbit movies. Back to Dragonstone, and a strategy meeting from Team Daenerys is taking place. Yara is in favour of Scorched Earth, as is Ilaria. Tyrion argues against it. Daenerys takes his side. Elena makes a witty remark, and they get to the plan. Basically, for the Westerosi armies to besiege King's Landing, while the Unsullied and Dothraki sail for Casterly Rock, it being the seat of power for the Lannisters. Tyrion figures that if they lose the rock, it'll be much easier to beat them. Everyone agrees. Daenerys and Elena talk in private, and she tells her to basically ignore Tyrion. Cut to Grey Worm, and Missandei comes to say goodbye. He finally acknowledges his feelings for her, and what follows is kind of awkward, really. Cut back to Sam and Jim Broadbent. Sam wants to try and treat Sejora since he's read about it being done, but Jim Broadbent's having none of it. Sam, however, ain't taking no for an answer and sneaks into Jorah's room that night to go all renegade surgeon. He gives Jorah a drink and sets the how-to book on the table. What follows is... Oh. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, that is disgusting. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, 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 that's a pie transition. Oh, that is grim. It's like he knew what we were cutting away from. So moving swiftly on, Arya's sitting at a table and, oh cool, it's hot pie. So she takes some pie and ale from him, but he's cool with it because hot pie's great. They get to talking and hot pie mentions that Jon Snow's king in the north. Arya's like, shit off, you're making it up. And he's like, nah, legit. So Arya heads off to Winterfell. Meanwhile, at Winterfell, Jon brings the Dragonstone matter to his court, along with the fact that Sam's Dragonglass letter basically says Dragonstone would be a great place to go right now. Even so, the court pretty much unanimous says no, including Lyanna Mormont, whose word, as we know, is law. So naturally, he pulls rank and decides to go anyway. LOL! So he goes to the crypt, and Littlefinger tries his usual stick on Jon, who doesn't know him so well. Unfortunately for him, it goes about as well as it did when he tried it on Sean Bean. Jon then rides off, leaving Sansa in charge of the North while he's gone. Cut to Arya warming herself by the fire, and her horse is panicking. And you know she's gone North, because all of a sudden there's a ton of wolves about. She looks about ready to fight them when an actual dire wolf comes up behind her. Holy shit, it's nine Nymeria. How many comebacks is that this week? I is like, come with me, and Nymeria's like, nah fam, and she's like, fair. Cut to the vaguely established seas, and the Sand Snakes are arguing about who they get to kill. Cut to the lower deck, and some international diplomacy is happening, but then they get attacked by Euron Greyjoy and his vaguely established Merry Men. Some inconsistent cinematography and fighting ensues, and long story short, Euron kills two of the Sand Snakes before the rest of them are captured, and Yara jumps down to fight with him, and it goes less than perfectly. Okay, Theon. This is it. This is your moment. Your chance for redemption. The turning point in your character. The chance to finally show- OH COME ON! Fucking wimp. Do do fucking do do fucking do do. Right, so we start at the beach, yeah? Tyrion is on hand to greet Jon and Davos. They exchange pleasantries and Missende has them hand over their weapons before some harmless flirting from Davos. They get to chatting about life on the way up and Drogon comes to say hello and Jon immediately regrets his decision. Cut to Melisandre brooding on the cliff. Varys comes up and wants to know why she's not there to greet him. She lets him know that Jon Snow doesn't like her very much since the whole burning an innocent child alive thing. She says she'll be back one more time as she has to die in this country just like Varys, and on that bombshell she leaves him looking like someone pissed in his cornflakes. Jon goes in for his introduction, and Daenerys' resume is impressive. Jon's less so. Danny addresses Jon as Lord, Davos corrects her, saying he's king, and she's like, you what, mate? And then lets him know he'd damn well better be there to bend the knee, and he's like, you're having a laugh. She is not having a laugh. Jon appeals to a sense of decency, and then says that the war basically means nothing. Danny takes exception to that. He tries to explain the threat of the Night King. Not believing him, Danny basically explains everything she's been through and says she survived all that because she's a legit boss. Jon is unmoved and reiterates that the Night King will kill everyone, so it doesn't really matter who's in charge. Davos steps in as Jon's PR man and talks him up a storm, saying he has no birthright but those tough sons of bitches in the North chose him to lead them anyway. Then he lets slip that Jon was stabbed in the heart and Jon's like, shut up! Danny's like, you ain't loyal to me and Jon's like, I don't know you. And she's like, fair. But then she lets it be known that since she's queen, that means the North is in open rebellion, effectively declaring war. Enter a messenger to let Danny know about the clusterfuck at the end of the last episode, and Danny immediately regrets her decision. She apologises for being rude and says they'll talk later, and John's like, we at war then, and Danny's like, nah. Cut to the sea and Theon's getting lifted out of the water. They ask what happened to Yara. He tells them and says he tried to save her. Guy's like, nah, you're chatting shit, fam, and walks off. Cut to King's Landing, and Euron is leading Yara and Elia 
Arya through a hostile crowd and throws them at Cersei's feet. Cersei says she'll marry him after the war, which, as far as she's concerned, is basically telling him to jog on, but in a way that sounds like he's getting what he wants. He teases Jaime and then we cut to the dungeons, Cersei gloats over the Dornish prisoners and then kisses Ilaria's daughter. Turns out by doing that she gave her the same poison that killed Marcella. She wants to keep Ilaria alive for as long as possible and make her watch her daughter die, which is pretty brutal. Oh look, it's Jaime! and wine. So obviously Cersei comes right in to revel in her victory, and now it's morning. There's a knock on the door, Jamie says don't, but Cersei opens it anyway. The messenger says someone from Bravos has arrived. She sends her off asking for fresh sheets. Oh look, it's Jamie. and wine. Oh wait, that's a transition. Cersei's hosting Mark Gatiss, who congratulates her on destroying the Sept of Baelor. She says it was an accident. Mark Gatiss says he believes her, but his face says bullshit. Anyway, he's there to ask for the Iron Bank's money back. It's a lot of money. She promises that if he stays there for a fortnight, her debt will be paid in full, which is either a very ambitious promise, a veiled threat, or foreshadowing blackmail. We'll find out next week, I imagine. Cut to Tyrion on the cliffs of Dragonstone, where he's going to brood about stuff. He finds Jon also brooding about stuff, which makes him feel like his brooding is inadequate. So John's like, this is bullshit, dead people are coming. And Tyrion's like, we all got problems, mate, I've lost a bunch of boats and people. And John's like, fair, but you don't believe me. And Tyrion actually does. Because why would he and Jor Mormont both be lying? Even so, asking Daenerys to take him at his word is not reasonable. So he asks if there's anything he might be able to actually help him with. Cut to Daenerys and Tyrion is trying to get her to give John the dragon glass. She doesn't know it was there, so she won't miss it. She agrees. Cut to John approaching Daenerys. He says her dragons are pretty neat. She says he can mine the dragon glass, and he's like, cool. But then she's like, I'm still your queen, and he's like, whatevs. Cut to Winterfell, and Sansa's taking inventory and otherwise ruling the north like a boss, and then Littlefinger tries his usual stick. He says Cersei is dangerous, and Sansa's like, no shit, Sherlock. And then he gives us some garbled talk about doing everything at once, which sounds good until you think about it for a second and realise it makes absolutely no sense. She's then called away to the gates, and... Hey, it's Bran! Emotional reunion time! Okay, so then they go to talk in the godswood, and she's like, you can be a lord now, and he's like, nah fam, I'm three-eyed raven, and she's like, the fuck? And he explains nothing. He then says he can basically see everything, and rather than tell her that Jon is okay, or that the Night King is closer than people think, or about Jon's parentage, he chooses to tell her he watched her get horrifically raped by Ramsay. On the plus side, he said she looked beautiful. Apparently tact is not a priority when training to be an omnipresent forest god. Stay classy, Bran. Cut to the city. Ellen, hey, Jorah's okay. He's being examined by Jim Broadbent, and he's like, right, you're cured, now fuck off. Letting Sam know he's gonna get it later. They exchange sheepish looks and say their goodbyes. Jorah's off back to Daenerys. Later, Jim Broadbent's giving Sam a scolding for being stupid and trying to treat Jorah. Then says congratulations for being great and getting it right. And he's like, as a reward, I'm not kicking you out. Now copy these scrolls. Cut to Dragonstone, and there's another strategy meeting. Danny wants to fly around on a dragon's burning ships, and everyone else says no. And Tyrion goes over his plan to prestige Casterly Rock. The castle is well fortified, but Tyrion's like, it's cool, I built secret entrances in the sewers way back when. Now it's just been retiled, so careful with those weapons. So they use the passages to bypass the walls and take the castle. Oh, nice! So the castle's theirs now, but then they see the Greyjoy fleet approaching, and Grey Worm immediately regrets this decision. He grabs a soldier and asks where the rest of the Lannisters went. Cut to Highgarden, which is where the rest of the Lannisters went. We don't see a battle, but the result is pretty clearly implied. Alan is sitting in a room and, oh look, it's Jamie And wine. They trade typically witty banter, and Jamie gives Elena some poison to drink for the sake of a painless death. After drinking it, she's all, oh, by the way, it was me who poisoned Joffrey, lol! And the episode ends giving her the last laugh. You know what, never mind the intro. This episode, man, my god. Right, so for only the second time this season, the episode opens somewhere other than Dragonstone. In Highgarden, Jamie opens a wagon full of gold and chucks a bag of it to Bronn, who wants to know what he could possibly be upset about. Jamie doesn't feel like sharing. Bronn starts bitching about still not having the castle he was promised, and Jamie's like, don't bitch, I just gave you a crap ton of gold. The rest of the gold is to go to the Iron Bank of Bravos, so Cersei's promise was actually just an ambitious promise, who knew? Bronn continues to bitch, and Jamie's like, you'll get your castle when we win this damn war! The Tarleys come along and ask for help in moving the grain supplies, and Jamie sends Bronn to do it. Cut to King's Landing, and Cersei, actually keeping her very ambitious promise, has impressed Mark Gatiss. And he's like, yeah, you can have more war money. And she's like, bitchin'. Cut to Winterfell, and Littlefinger gives Bran the dagger that was supposed to kill him way back in season one. He gives him a quick history lesson, no doubt so he can try his usual shtick on him later. But Bran spooks Littlefinger by repeating his chaos is a ladder line from season... 
Three, I think? Littlefinger evidently thinks better of this encounter and leaves. In comes Mira to say her tearful goodbyes, saying she'll miss Bran, but she has to go. And Bran says, Okay, thanks, bye. I'm not actually exaggerating there, that's actually the sum of what he says. Yeah, Bran's kind of a dick now. Cut to the outskirts of Winterfell and oh my god, Arya's almost home. She approaches the gates and the guards tell her to fuck off and don't believe who she is. One of them thinks he's tough and takes a swing at her. She dodges without as much as a flinch and says she's getting in one way or another so they might as well at least check. They sit her down somewhere and lose track of her in seconds. Cut to them feebly trying to explain themselves to Sansa but she knows straight away where Arya's gone. Cut to the crypts and a statue of Sean Bean with the face changed just enough so that HBO doesn't have to pay him for his life. Emotional reunion! They start catching up since they haven't seen each other since season one. And Arya tells Sansa about her death list and Sansa assumes she's joking. One more hug and Sansa tells her Bran's home too. Cut to the godswood. Bran is sitting there fighting meth withdrawal or something and Arya comes up behind him. He gives her the most nonchalant it's been six years hug ever and Sansa mentions his visions. Bran mentions Arya's list and Sansa's like shit she wasn't kidding. Bran pulls out the dagger from a couple of scenes ago and gives it to Arya because to be fair What's he gonna do with it? Arya pushes Bran around for a bit and Brienne catches sight of her and Pod's like, Hey, promise kept! And she's like, I didn't do much. And Pod's like, take a damn compliment. Cut to Dragonstone and Masende tells Daenerys that her and Grey Worm awkwardly fucked. They go to see Jon and he wants to show them the Mountain of Dragonglass. There it is. He takes her further into the cave to show her some carvings. She instantly believes them and says she'll fight with Jon if he bends the knee. And he's like, nah. And she insists. This conversation is going to happen at least one more time, isn't it? So they're coming out of the cave and then Tyrion fills her in on the situation. And she's like, you fucking what? Things are not going well for her. Tyrion urges her to stick to the plan, but she's like, that's it. Fuck this noise. Dragons. Tyrion tries to talk her out of it, but she is unwilling to brook discourse. She asks Jon what he thinks she should do. John brings up that if she burns King's Landing to the ground with her dragons, the people who live there might get a bit annoyed, and says, yeah, best not burn cities. Cut to Winterfell and Brienne owns Pod's ass, as is tradition. Arya happens by and wants a sparring match against Brienne herself, not one of the puny normals. Brienne doesn't take her seriously right away, but she soon corrects that, and, and honestly, I don't even have anything funny to say over this. This is just great. Sansa and Littlefinger watch intently, and after the fight, Arya locks eyes with him. Wait, is... Is he on a list? I don't think he is. Something tells me if he's not, he soon will be, but I don't think he's on it at the moment. Back on Dragonstone, Davos is teasing Jon, saying, You like Daenerys, and he's like, I don't! They talk to Missende and explain the concept of bastards, which doesn't exist to her since they don't have marriage in Nar. They ask her about how she got there and about Daenerys, and she talks her up a storm and basically assures Jon that she's great. A Greyjoy ship happens by and Jon sees Theon. He is not happy to see Theon. Theon says he needs to see Daenerys, and Jon says, Too late, mate, she's gone. Cut to some road somewhere. And the Lannisters just transported the last of the gold. Jamie makes a faux pas, Bronn laughs and mocks the privileged. Then they hear a sound. Something that sounds like thousands of coconuts being banged together repeatedly. Oh shit, it's the Dothraki! It looks like the Lannisters are outnumbered. Jamie, however, voices his confidence. Perhaps a bit soon. Yes! Yes! Burn them all! <laughs> Sorry, got a bit carried away there. So, there's a really good battle scene interspersed with Drogon just wrecking their shit. Jamie takes some archers and has them fire a volley of arrows at Drogon. It does nothing. Jamie sends Bronn to the artillery and engages the Dothraki. Oh, apparently he did learn to fight left-handed. Cool. Bronn gets unhorsed and is having a bit of a rough time of it. Where's Robson Green when you need him? The Dothraki that unhorsed him chases him into a wagon and... Ah! Oh, that's gonna leave a mark. Tyrion came with the army to see this battle, for some reason, and Bronn is readying the Black Arrow to defend Lake Town from the dragon. Oh, sorry, that's something else. He fires a... What would you even call that? A bolt? Uh, anyway, it misses, but he manages to load and fire a second shot just as Drogon comes in for an attack, and he hits him in what I assume is as close to a dragon has as a shoulder. Unfortunately, it does little more than piss him off. Danny sets down to remove the bolt, and Jaime sees her, picks up a spear and charges, much to Tyrion's chagrin. Bad idea. Followed by an idea that is only very slightly better, and the episode ends on a cliffhanger. Fucking hell. I mean... Not to put too fine a point on this, but he was wearing full plate armour. He's not swimming out of that. Opening themes are... Wait, 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 wait. Joe Dempsey? Well, guess Gendry's back then. Thanks for preserving the surprise, HBO. Fuck's sake.
Anyway, we start where the battle from last week ended, and Bron somehow manages to pull Jamie out of what was pretty deep water, despite the fact that he was wearing a full suit of plate armour and a solid gold hand, which, if you remember, was dense enough to block a sword strike in Season 5. Yeah, Bron been hitting the gym. Give that man a fucking castle. Jamie and Bron argue about Bron still not having his fucking castle. Oh, and the fact that there are three dragons and their situation is hopeless, that too. Bron makes it clear he's not sticking around if it comes to fighting dragons, and we cut to Tyrion exploring the ruins of the battlefield, and then to Daenerys assuring her fallen enemies of their queen's lies. She says, I'm not really here to kill you all with fire. Now bend the knee or I'll kill you all with fire. A few do so right away. A few more need some encouragement from Drogon. One notable exception is Randall Tarly, that one guy who can suddenly make a room feel colder upon entry. He claims he already has a queen and Tyrion points out that he had a different one like last week. Tarly insists that it's not the same thing because Danny's a dirty foreigner with an army of savages. And she's like, there. Then Dickon comes up and demands to be killed as well, despite his dad's protests, and Tyrion advises against it, to no avail. So he tries to reason with Daenerys to imprison him instead, and she's like, nah, and burns them both to nothing in seconds. No one else needs any convincing to bend the knee. Jamie returns to King's Landing and bursts in on Cersei to tell them they're fucked. She tries to remain optimistic, but Jamie reiterates what he saw. Nevertheless, Cersei points out that Daenerys will not be kind to them, and if they're fucked anyway, they might as well fight. Oh, and Jamie explains that Elena killed Joffrey, not Tyrion. Anyway, Anyway, back to Dragonstone. Jon's brooding by the cliff when he sees Drogon flying back with Daenerys. Drogon comes over to say hello. Jon gives him a pet and he flies off to tell the others he made a friend. Danny tells Jon of the success of her mission and asks Jon about the knife in the heart thing. Before Jon can deny it, hey, Jorah's here. He bends the knee and Danny introduces him to Jon. Emotional reunion. Cut to Winterfell and ravens fly off while Bran sits in his chair mid meth trip and the camera follows the birds as they fly over the mountains and ah zombies. Bran comes down just in time to tell the maester to send ravens. Cut to the citadel receiving said raven. The maesters are mocking what Bran saw and Sam, who just so happens to be there, vouches for him. Eventually Sam convinces Jim Broadbent to at least write to clear things up. Sam leaves and it turns out no one's had the heart to tell him about his dad and brother being burned alive. And then we cut back to Dragonstone. Varys and Tyrion are rationalising Danny's burning of people alive. Varys advises Tyrion to find a way to make her listen. He asks if Varys has read the scroll he's holding and he says it's a sealed scroll for the king in the north. So of course he's read it. Cut to John reading it. He finds out Arya and Bran are alive. This is good. But more importantly, the army of the dead is dangerously close. This is not good. Tyrion suggests capturing a White Walker to prove to Cersei that they're real and thereby negotiate an armistice. Jorah volunteers to go north and take one and Tyrion volunteers to go to King's Landing with help from Davos to speak to Jaime and get the message to Cersei. Jon points out that no one but him has ever been beyond the wall, so he'd better go too. Danny's like, I didn't say you could go, and Jon's like, bitch please, I'm a king, I can do what I want. And so it's decided. Cut to Winterfell, and the people are not happy with Jon for not being in the north, of which he is king, and they nudge Sansa to take over. She's like, nah. Later, her and Arya argue about her not defending Jon, and Arya accuses Sansa of wanting to take over. Ooh, tensions are rising. Cut to a beach on King's Landing, Davos sends Tyrion off to meet with Jaime, and says he He's got his own business in Flea Bottom. Oh, his own business! I wonder what it could be! His name was in the credits! Spoilt the surprise. Cut to the cellars and Bronn's taking Jaime down there to train. Psych! Tyrion's there. Jaime's not happy. Tyrion bitches about their dad and says Daenerys is gonna win and then relays Danny's message of a ceasefire. Cut back to Davos in the market and oh look who it is! What a surprise! It's Gendry! <laughs> So they catch up and he mentions danger and he needs help and Gendry's like, ballin', let's go. He picks up a hammer just like his dad's and they leave. Down at the beach, they run into a couple of guards, Davos bribes them with gold and fermented crab, pitching it as a potent aphrodisiac. On their way back, they see Tyrion pass them and come back. They know who it is. Not a problem, as Gendry introduces them to the business end of his hammer like a boss and then they leave. Back to Jaime. He goes to tell Cersei he met with Tyrion. She's oddly calm about it and then says she knows and that she might be open to peace negotiations. Oh, by the way, she's pregnant. She warns Jaime never to betray her again and we're back on Dragonstone with Davos and Gendry. Derp it derp! He tells him not to tell Jon who he is. He instantly tells Jon who he is and Davos is like, may as well not even fucking be here. And they make ready to leave for the north. Jorah says his goodbyes, as does Jon. Cut to Sam, copying his scrolls. Gilly casually mentions something that will be very important later on eventually, but Sam is pissed off for not being taken seriously and has a rant, not paying attention. He eventually decides, fuck it, I'm leaving to actually do something, and off they go. Back to Winterfell, Arya is shadowing Littlefinger and notices him going to great lengths for a small piece of paper, which he hides in a locked room. Arya breaks in and scours the place, eventually finding it. It's the letter Sansa was forced to write in season one. A few season one callbacks this year, aren't there? She looks disturbed and leaves. Turns out Littlefinger knew he was being followed and he's watching her. Cut to Watch. That was quick. 
and John talks to Tormund to convince him to join their party. I assume he'll be tanking. Tormund says he's mad, but agrees to go, saying they're not the only ones. He introduces them to the Hound and company, who Gendry is not happy to see. They argue for a bit, and then set out into the blizzards, and the episode chooses that moment to leave us hanging. I'm not even looking at the opening credits this time. It's gonna be a long one. <laughs> Right, so there's a tracking shot of the map in Dragonstone, and then, as usual, we start where we left off last week, with the raiding party beyond the wall commencing their, let's be honest, really dumb plan. Tormund lets it be known he'd fuck any of them, Gendry remarks he's never seen snow before, and Tormund snorts at John's definition of north, and suggests that he might be better off bending the knee. Gendry hasn't forgotten what the Brotherhood did to him, but the Hound tells him to stop whinging. Thoros gives Gendry a drink, and we cut to John and Jorah talking about their dads. John tries to give Jorah Longclaw, but he won't take it. Cut to Winterfell, and Arya's talking to Sansa without looking at her about memories of Sean Bean before leading into, Bitch, I found the letter. An oddly hot-headed Arya chews Sansa out for this, completely jumping to conclusions about the situation. Sansa, for some reason, doesn't point this out, and an easily avoidable conflict could be on the horizon. Cut back to the north, and the Hound tells Tormund he hates gingers, also teaching him a new word. Tormund clumsily flirts with him, and then they talk about Brienne and how monstrous her potential babies with Tormund would be. John and Beric chat about God, and the Hound recognises the mountain he saw in the fire. Cut to Dragonstone, and Danny gives Tyrion the backhanded compliment that the thing she likes about him is that he's not a hero, because heroes are stupid. Tyrion's like, you like John, and she's like, I don't! They chat shit about Cersei for a bit, and then talk about ruling philosophy which Tyrion uses to tell Danny off about burning the Tarleys. They then talk about succession. Danny doesn't want to talk about succession. Back in the north, and the party are being attacked by the smoke monster from Lost, or just walking through a blizzard, and come face to face with a large zombie polar bear and- WHOA! It got Nameless Extra One. He had so much to live for. Thoros and Beric fire up their Lord of Lightsabers and set it on fire. It doesn't kill the bear and it starts to maul Thoros. The Hound can't help him because he's scared of fire, so Jorah shanks it in the neck with dragonglass and it dies. Beric seals Thoros' wounds with fire and helps him up. Storm transition. Cut to Winterfell. Sansa is telling Littlefinger about the letter, for some reason not suspecting him at all. Littlefinger kisses Sansa's ass a little and says things will be fine. Cut back to the A story, I mean the North, and Jorah chats to Thoros about a battle once. Thoros doesn't remember because he was drunk. They happen across- Ah, zombies! They happen across a zombie raiding party. A White Walker notices a fire. And they attack! Jorah is quickly outmatched, but then John kills the White Walker, and the rest of them just sort of die off, conveniently leaving one straggler. They knock it to the ground, and it tries to scream for help. The Hound tries to silence it, and- Oh, gross! John looks perturbed. They sense incoming zombies. John sends Gendry back to send a raven for help, leaving Tormund with his hammer. They run along until they encounter thin ice. It's probably best to be careful, so they look behind them and- Ah, zombies! Fucking run! Tragically. The zombies catch Nameless Extra 2, but his sacrifice is not in vain, as it causes a rift in the ice that keeps the zombies away from the party. He saved them all. Cut to Gendry, having done his best Barry Allen impression, and arrived back at the castle really bloody quickly. It's night time now. There's a brief establishing shot of the party huddled up on an island before Gendry does his best Titus O'Neil impression and face plants on his way to the objective. He's greeted by Davos, who he tells to send a raven. Back to the party. They're sitting on a rock. It's morning now. The Hound kicks their captive zombie, because why not? Oh, and Thoros is dead. Sad face. The Hound is sorry for the loss, but not too sorry to steal his drink. Beric says a little prayer, John reminds him to burn the body and marks he could do with some fire, so Beric activates his Lord of Lightsaber, and then says another prayer. Jorah remarks that even if they don't freeze soon, the water between them and the zombies will, at which point they're fucked. He also points out that when John killed a White Walker, most of the zombies just kind of died off on their own. He suggests going for the walkers to thin out the numbers quicker, but John points out that they shouldn't risk killing their captured zombie. Beric offers an alternative kill the Night King. If they manage that, theoretically, all the White Walkers will die and their zombie followers with them, effectively ending the war then and there. An excellent and inventive suggestion, with the minor drawback that they are a tad outnumbered. The episode leaves them to ponder their situation, and we go back to Winterfell. Sansa just got an invitation from Cersei to go to King's Landing, and she's like, fuck that, and tells Brienne to go in a place. Brienne doesn't want to leave her alone with Littlefinger, but she's having none of it and sends her off. Over to Dragonstone, Daenerys apparently got the Raven. Bloody hell, that was quick, wasn't it? So she wants to go and help, and Tyrion is advising her against it, saying John and company knew the risks, and that she shouldn't risk her life for the sake of a good action set. I mean, for the sake of a few men. Tyrion points out that if Daenerys dies, everyone is basically fucked, but Danny's not in the habit of doing nothing. She takes her three dragons and sets off in the direction of the plot. Back north of the wall, the Hound is staring down the horde of zombies, and chucks a stone at them, knocking the jaw off one of them, because why not? Not content with that, he throws another one, which makes it about halfway across, and lets them know the ice is solid again. Nice going, Clegane. Everyone braces themselves for a fight, and for a while they seem to be doing okay, but only John, Beric, and Jorah can effectively kill them, since conventional weapons can't do more than knock them down. Eventually, the numbers catch up to them. Tormund gets piled on by a bunch of them, but the Hound bails him out. But all the while, they're getting pushed back up the rock. Eventually, they reach the top, and there's nowhere to run. But thankfully, they're all still alive. Oh god, Nameless no, Extra 3! No! The undead bastards! John stops to mourn, as he should. Without Nameless Extra 3, they're lambs to the slaughter. They brace for their inevitable demise. Daenerys Ex Machina! Three massive dragons come swooping down, raining fire on the zombies. What a spectacle to behold, arriving at the last possible moment. But bloody hell, that was quick. How big is Westeros again? Right, so she sets down and they all get on Drogon while Jon holds back the zombies. They urge him to get on, but he's really close to levelling up, so he just wants to rack up his kill count a bit more. Eventually, the Night King pulls out a javelin, and after a slow and suspenseful build-up, chucks it into the sky, blindsiding Viserion, causing him to crash into the ice. Viserion is dead. 
sad face. John kills two more and locks eyes with the Night King for just long enough to see him go for another javelin. Recognising now that those things do not, in fact, fuck around, John finally decides to run for Drogon, telling them to get out of Dodge. Unfortunately, he's tackled through the ice and dragged underwater before he can get to them, forcing them to abandon him, which, frankly, I think they're generous for not having done already. Drogon manages to dodge the javelin, but almost sends Jorah falling off in the process. They pull him back on and head for home. Meanwhile, John manages to pull himself out of the water and find his sword, but he can barely move from how cold he is. Eventually, the zombies notice him, and he braces for his inevitable demise. Benjamin X Machina! Uncle Benjamin's back and- Oh, wait, no, never mind. Well, that was disappointing. Not for nothing, he could have got on the horse in the time it took him to tell John there was no time for him to get on the horse. Leaving his long lost uncle to die, John rides off into the distance. Back at the wall, the hound loads the captured zombie into a boat, says his goodbyes, such as they are to Tormund and Beric, and heads off. Meanwhile, Daenerys is looking mournfully out into the distance. Just as she's about to go in at Jorah's behest, she hears a horn and sees John's horse. Cut to the interior, and John is being tucked into bed and his wet clothes removed. Danny sees the stab wounds from season 5. And we cut back to Winterfell. Sansa is searching Arya's things and finds several faces. Arya catches her at it and takes the opportunity to creep her out as much as possible. Establishing while she does so that her really good David Bradley impression was just faceless man magic of some sort. Ah oh well. She hands her a dagger and walks off. Got to the boat back from the wall and John is waking up to find Danny over him. He apologises for getting Viserion killed and pledges himself to Daenerys. Not like that. Well that comes later and brings its own set of problems. But you know what I mean. Cut back to north of the wall and the zombies have got a load of really big chains from somewhere and are dragging Viserion's corpse from the lake. The Night King approaches it and summons the blue eyes white dragon. Ooh that's not good. Right, so the episode opens with Grey Worm and his Unsullied looking badass and forming up outside a castle. Oh hey, it's Bronn. Looks like he got his fucking castle after all. Anyway, he orders extra precautions and he and Jamie debate what possible reward men without cocks would want in this world. Where basically the entire reward system for soldiers is brothels. Neither can answer. The Unsullied are backed by the Dothraki and Bronn remarks that it's beginning to look a bit like they might very well be fucked. Cut to one of the boats on the way there, and John and Tyrion debate the merits of city life, which basically boils down to more work and more concentrated brothel. Cut to below deck, and the hound trolls the captive zombie in the box, because why not? Cut to Cersei's chamber, and she's getting a sit rep from Kyburn. She tells the mountain the preferred order of killing should shit go south, and leaves to meet them, with Jaime looking visibly uncomfortable. Outside, Jorah and Tyrion give a history lesson on the dragon pit while walking to meet with the Lannisters. Bronn greets them, accompanied by Brienne and Pod, and some of the Lannisters. There's as emotional a reunion as the situation will allow between Tyrion and Pod, the Hound tells someone to fuck off and has a basically respectful reunion in catch up with Brienne. Bronn and Tyrion trade bants and they arrive at the meeting place and Bronn takes Pod off for a drink. There's an uncomfortable silence, the Hound laments his situation and Cersei appears flanked by an entourage of guards and Jamie. Oh and you're on too. Clegane Bowl shadowing! There's a bit more awkward waiting before Daenerys descends with her remaining dragons. Cersei throws some shade but Euron's more of a dick than even she was to tolerate. Then Tyrion and Jon get to explaining the situation. Cersei thinks it's all a joke. Tyrion concedes words aren't gonna cut it, so the Hound comes out with the box and kicks it open and AH ZOMBIE! The chains attached to it conveniently stop it just short of Cersei who incidentally no one made a move to protect. Jon lets them know how to kill them and drives home the point that if the dead aren't stopped at the wall everyone will be made a zombie and therefore they're fucked. Euron's like fuck this I'm out. Cersei's like truce then and Daenerys is like bitchin'. But then Cersei throws the curveball that as a condition of the truce, John can't get involved in the fight between the two queens after the war, and John's like, oh bloody hell, I can't gear that, since he's already pledged himself to Daenerys. Not like that. In response to that, Cersei basically tells him to jog on. Danny and Tyrion are like, fuck's sake, John. John says he's not gonna lie because his word would stop meaning anything and lying won't help them in this fight. And, and Tyrion says that is indeed a problem, but the more immediate problem is that we're fucked. That's not me this time, that's the actual line. So Tyrion goes to see Cersei in a last ditch effort to convince her to help. He shares last bants with Jaime just in case and goes through. The following scene is really worth watching as is if you can, but they basically hash it out and get out what they've been keeping in. Then Tyrion dares Cersei Cersei to have him killed. She doesn't. And they argue about Daenerys and Tyrion guesses Cersei's pregnant. Cut back to the arena and Danny comforts Jon's moping. They get to talking and the question of kids comes up. Danny's like, the witch that killed my husband says I can't have him and Jon's like, bet she's chatting shit fam. They lament their situation and Jon says they're fucked. Again, actual line. Then Cersei comes back and she's like, yeah, all right, we'll help you, and everyone else is like, bitching. Cut to Winterfell, and Sansa's pissed off that Jon surrendered the crown without consulting her. Littlefinger tries to convince her to Norman Osborne him, but she won't for fear of Arya. Littlefinger tells Sansa to assume the worst of Arya and manipulates her into reasoning that Arya wants to kill her and become Lady of Winterfell. Crafty bastard. Cut to Dragonstone, and Jon is laying out how to gather the troops, suggesting that he and Daenerys sail together. She goes for it. Oh god, it's gonna happen, isn't it? Afterwards, Theon talks to Jon about morality, and Jon's like, I've fucked up a lot. And Theon's like, not as much as me, mate. And Jon's like, 
Fair. They reconcile after John forgives what he can of Theon's betrayal, and Theon declares his intention to rescue Yara. Cut to the beach, and Theon tries to rally the Ironborn, but they seem more interested in fucking off and colonising some islands somewhere. Theon gets into a scrap with the ringleader, and after a decidedly one-sided beatdown, he gets lucky after repeated failed attempts at a low blow, and takes him out. For some reason, this is good enough for the others to follow him. Cut to Winterfell, and Sansa orders Arya be brought to the Great Hall. There she is. She builds up the drama with the charges, and then suddenly says, Psych, it's actually Littlefinger's trial. She proceeds to lay bare all of Littlefinger's crimes, basically all the shit that's gone down in the world's longest prologue to the zombie attack. That was all him, and Bran, being an omnipotent forest god now, knows everything for a fact. He tries to talk his way out of it, and then tries to pull rank on his underlings. Neither works, so he tries begging for his life. Before long, Arya walks up and slices his throat. Littlefinger, and with him the political intrigue element of the show is dead. Sad face? Question mark? Smiley face? I mean, uh, depends where you stand, I suppose. Cut to King's Landing, and Jamie's going over deployment with the troops, and Cersei's all like, we're not actually going north, you donut. Turns out Euron fucked off to bring an army of swords from Essos, and Cersei just plans to take back Westeros while everyone else is fighting the zombies. Jamie says, fuck this, I'm out, and leave, calling Cersei's bluff to have him killed. He rides off through the snow to join the fight. Cut to the north, and Sam Tarly visits Bran, and Bran's like, I'm three odd raven, and Sam's like, Cool. Bran confirms the R plus L equals J theory, Jon's actually the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark. Then Sam says he's not actually a bastard. There was a secret wedding and Bran's like, shit off, and uses his omnipotent forest god powers to confirm that Jon is in fact Aegon Targaryen, heir to the Iron Throne. As they come to this realisation, Jon, not realising she's his aunt, pledges himself to Daenerys. Yes, like that. God, not only are they related, her assumed birthright is actually his. That's gonna cause some tension next season, isn't it? Anyway, back in Winterfell, Arya and Sansa, they reconcile their differences and resolve to look after each other, and mutually declare that they miss Sean Bean. We all do. Bran decides to do some meth in the godswood, and through that we cut to the wall. Tormund's manning the place, but then- Ah, zombie! Holy shit, zombie dragon! That's like a billion times worse! Oh. Well. That wall wasn't up to much, was it? That's not good. Things are gonna get interesting next season.